Today with Joseph Prince. Jesus has double claim on the throne. You know, the line of David goes all the way to Jesus Christ. So in the natural, his great ancestor would be David. And also he was born king. Hey, what does this king do? With all the power he has, he goes around cleansing the leper, opening the eyes to the blind, multiplying little to bless many, just going around blessing. What a king. God gave us a choice, people. God gave you a free choice. You say, why didn't God just stop Adam from taking that fruit in the first place? God is all powerful, isn't he? Yes, if he wanted robots, he would have done it. If God is almighty and uses his power when Adam was about to take the fruit and then Adam's hand shake all of a sudden and God made his hand with great velocity come across his face. <laughs> God can do that. But will God be just if God creates a being as a free moral agent? No, God didn't want robots. God wanted truly a, a person with a free choice to come to love him because they want to love him, to worship him but there's always a risk involved. And you cannot, because of the risk, not create a free moral agent. But one thing though, you are free to choose. You can choose to walk out here if you want to. Nobody will stop you. No angel will stop you. I promise you that. Amen? But you cannot choose the result, the final result of your choice. That's been predetermined. Like fire burns. You can choose to put your finger in the fire, but you cannot say, I choose no burn. No, you can choose to put your finger there, but you cannot choose no burn. Burn has been chosen before the foundations of the earth. Okay? Are you with me so far? So the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And there is no other name under heaven given among men, the Bible says, whereby we must be saved. Jesus says, I am the way, definite article, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Amen. So all of a sudden, this blind beggar with no name, amen, heard this commotion. And a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, uh, in Luke's account, it says that uh, he asked the people, oh, what's happening? He heard the cacophony of, of the crowd passing by, all the different sounds and noises, and he realized something's Something is happening. There's a, a sudden crowd and all that. Oh, what's going on? He asked someone. And they said, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Now, they use that term, Jesus of Nazareth. Today is an honorable term, Jesus of Nazareth. But when they crucified him, they put over his head, Jesus of Nazareth. It's actually, actually a derogatory term. Like, like uh, Nathaniel in John chapter 1, when he heard that Jesus came out of Nazareth, he said this, can anything good come out of Nazareth? You look at the map of Nazareth. Nazareth is right smack in the middle of Israel where people from Egypt, in those days, the three continents would cross ways and they would cross Nazareth. So Nazareth became a, 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 a city known for its, you know, a notorious city for, uh, it's like a, a sin city. And right where sin abounds, God planted His Son. Grace superabounds. Amen. And every, every caravan will pass by and stop over in Nazareth. North, south, south, north. Both Egypt going to Syria, Syria to Egypt, and also westward to Jordan. So uh, there, Jesus of Nazareth, his name became Jesus of Nazareth. But it's a, it, it, in the beginning, it was a derogatory term, right? But later on, because of Jesus and what he is and, and, and what he's done, it's become a name of fragrance. Amen. So he heard the people say, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And then he cried out. He began to cry and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Notice he didn't cry. Jesus of Nazareth. Whoa. Something happened. In Hebrew, Yeshua bar David, haneni. Haneni means have grace on me. Hanan. If your name is John, it is Yo, Yahweh, Hanan. That means God is grace. Hanan there is the same word he used here. Haneni. Have mercy on me. Have grace on me. Yeshua bar David. Have haneni. Have mercy on me. He didn't say Jesus of Nazareth. What an amazing thing. The people said Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. But this blind man saw more than all of them put together. And because the gospel of Mark is the first gospel of all the four gospels, this is the very first time a man called Jesus bar David. 
Later on, the next chapter, when Jesus rode into the final week into uh, Jerusalem, he was riding on a donkey. Behold, your king comes, meek and lowly, riding on a donkey. And the people shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. They learned from the blind man. The son of David, son of David means the king, because David is the king of God's choice. Son of David, Jesus has double claim on the throne. You know, the line of David goes all the way to Jesus Christ. So in the natural, his great ancestor would be David. And also he was born king. Now, a lot of us, we say he was born to be king. No, the Bible didn't say that. The Bible did not say he's, he's born to be the heir apparent. No, he, when he's born, he's born king. Need prayer? Head over to our brand new digital prayer experience. You can use it any time of the day from your computer or mobile device and watch the prayers as many times as you need. You'll also receive free digital resources to help you through these challenging times. Let's stand in faith together for breakthrough in your situation. Visit josephprince.org slash prayer to get started. The wise man had the revelation from God when they came seeking for him and they asked the question, where is he born king of the Jews? Very soon we'll celebrate Christmas. He was born king. And what does this king do? With all the power he has, he goes around cleansing the leper, opening the eyes to the blind, multiplying little to bless many, just going around blessing. What a king. Has there ever been a king like this? So son of David, have mercy on me. Next. Then many warn him to be quiet. You know, the crowd is always like that, okay? One moment they will shout, Hosanna to the son of David. Next week, crucify him. And that's why our trust must be completely in the Lord. Don't get bitter with people. You know, in a way, have, uh, have confidence in people. Amen. But don't put your utmost trust in people. People fail. The best of them, of them will fail. Amen. Only one never fails. Amen. So the people say, quiet. Quiet. All right. But he cried out all the more. Son of David, Haneni! The people say, shut up! He shout out. <laughs> Isn't it interesting? The people knew him by his father. It's not your background. It's not who you are. What people say about who you are or who your background is, it's who you say of Jesus that makes all the difference in the world. He says, Jesus, you are the king. But what a king, a servant king. Amen? So he was a man who shouted, Jesus, have mercy on me. And they said, shut up. He shouted even more, all the more. Jesus, the last time I read, somebody else shouted at Jericho. It was Joshua and the mighty man that went around the wall of Jericho. On the seventh day, the seventh time, Joshua said, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. They all shouted and the walls of Jericho fell. This time, who was the one that shouted? A beggar. And what happened? The walls of his blindness came down. Both are Jericho. By the way, in modern military history, there's no record anywhere that a place was conquered in seven days. It was theirs. We know Joshua and the wall of Jericho, six days, seventh day, Jericho was theirs. But God did something in modern times in uh, Jerusalem. For 2,000 years, Jerusalem, ever since they rejected Jesus Christ, right? The, the Romans came in, destroyed the temple and all that. And the Jews have been around the world, you know, all for 2,000 years. And But Jesus prophesied that Jerusalem would be back in the hands of the Jews. And what happened was that 1967, in the Six Day War, on the seventh day, Jerusalem, after 2,000 years, was back in the hands of the Jewish people. So God is doing a parallel between these two. Amen. Amen. So here is, you see a parallel again. Joshua shouted to his men, but here is a beggar shouting. The walls of Jericho fell, a greater wall in this man's life. His blindness fell. Amen. And when he shouted, the Bible says Jesus stood still. Again, the story of Jericho, the story of, uh, of uh, Joshua rather. Jesus stood still. There was a time 
that Joshua was fighting against the Amorites. He and his men were fighting uh, not too far away from uh, Jericho. They met in other Jericho, they were at Gilgal and they climbed up and when they heard that the, the Gibeonites asked them to help and they came, you know, it was a, a forced march throughout the night to fight against the Amorites and, and they were fighting and they, they had the upper hand, they were winning against the Amorites but the sun was going down. Many of you have been there in the valley of Ayalon. Actually, in fact, you're there most of the time. On a good day, you can see the sun setting on one side and the moon rising on the other side. Let me show you a picture of the valley of Ayalon. This is the valley here. And that's where the battle took place. You can see the sun setting on the evening and the, and the moon rising on the other side. So what happened was that Joshua realized they were losing the momentum. They were winning and the enemies were retreating. But the moment they had the break for the night, the enemies can gain back momentum. All right? Can get back the upper hand if they rest. So Joshua, look at the, at the sun. And this is what Joshua says. Sun, stand still over Gibeon and moon in the valley of Ayalon. And many of you have been to Israel. And man, you have passed by that valley. You have to, from, from the uh, airport to Jerusalem, you have to pass by that valley. And you can see sometimes the, moon, uh, the sun setting at the right time and the moon coming up. Joshua says, sun, stand still. Moon, stay there. And you know that sun exerts a gravitational pull on all the planets, not just Earth. And if, if it stops exerting the gravitational pull, the Earth stops rotating. So the Bible says, Drop down, it says, there never was a day like that. All right, the Bible says, the Lord heeded the voice of a, of a man. The Lord fought for Israel. And there was, the sun did not go down. It was a longer day. In the Chinese history, they recorded a day. There was one day where it dragged for so long. And it was the time of Joshua, the walls of Jericho. Amen? Sun, stand still! And here, who is shouting? Over there, it was a commander of the Lord's army shouting. Here is a blind beggar saying, Jesus, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still. The one who made the sun stand still stood still at the shout of a rich man, a beggar, a blind beggar with no name. You know, kings in those days, many of them, they listened to the VIPs. They, they listen to other kings. They listen to wealthy people. But this king stood still at the cry of a blind beggar. Many of us look, ah, oh, poor blind beggar. We are, we are the blind beggar. All of us are blind. Amen. And we are all lost in our lostness. And the best part is that, the most proud thing is that to boast of our nothingness, actually. So we are always trying to get the validation of other people. We are, a, we are a society today, in today's world, we are a society more connected than all the societies that's gone on before. Yet, we are never so lonely. As so many people are, depression is increasing at an unprecedented scale. People are committing suicide, like never before, the numbers are increasing. Yet, we are supposed to be so connected. We're supposed to have more friends in Facebook. And yet, we're never so lonely. Because the answer is not found in how many people have likes for you. It is found, what you see of Jesus. What you see of Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Something about Jesus. I notice also in the gospel. You read carefully. You can never flatter Jesus into having a good opinion of you. Neither can you ever criticize or slight him into bad or hard thoughts of you. There's something I realized about Jesus. Many of us, you know, we judge other people and circumstances based on how people treat us. If they flatter us, we have good opinions of them. If they write bad things about us or they say bad things about us, right? We, we have hard thoughts about them. That shows that we cannot be objective. But the Lord, many a times, you know, people try to flatter Him and He goes right to the point. Amen. So, to see Him is to be like Him. He's altogether lovely. Can I have a good amen? amen? So Jesus stood still and commanded Him to be called. Then they called the blind man saying to Him, now the same people say, shut up just now, right? Now what they say? Be of good cheer. Rise, He's calling you. <laughs> And throwing aside his garment, I love this, 
throwing aside its garment. All of us are self-righteous. We clothe ourselves with, uh, you know, uh, uh, fig, fig leaves, uh, no, no blood. Amen. And we think we are well, well covered. But salad dressing cannot cover your sins. God was the first one to kill animals and clothe Adam and Eve. When you clothe yourself, you always feel it's not complete. It's, a, it's, it's an imperfect work. But when God clothes you, brother, sister, you are clothed. It's a picture of His Son who will come and die. And with the blood, you know, blood, skin of animals are blood all over. Without a shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And Jesus shed His blood. Amen. Praise God. And throwing aside His government means what? I'm not, I'm not coming back the same way I came. I went. I'm throwing aside His government. And the government is actually His insurance. In those days, they give people who are beggars, true beggars, if they are truly blind and they're begging, they give them a cloak of recognition. So people recognize they are legal beggars. All right? Not a corn beggar. In truth, he came to Jesus. Look at this king. Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, highest form of respect is Rabboni. It's not rabbi, it's Rabboni, chief master or Lord, that I may receive my sight. I love it. This king, look at this. Kings, when you come to a king, all right, you come to obey the king. You come to serve the king. You come to give things and gifts to the king. This king asked a blind beggar with no name, what do you want me to do for you? One translation, what will you that I do to you? In other words, I'm at your disposal. You command me. Has there ever been such a king? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he says, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said, go your way. Your faith has made you well. I love it. The Lord, when He heals someone, He never said, now you're ob obliged to follow me. He always said, go your way. To the Gadarian demoniac home, He freed from all those demons. He says, go home to your friends. Jairus' uh, daughter, He gave back to the family. The nine young, young men who was, was raised from the date, Jesus handed it back to His mother. He would say, go home. He would say, go your way. He never obliged the person He heals. This is grace. Amen. No, no doubt he has, he has uh, disciples, but then he never healed them and said, follow me. He never obligates them. Those people, you know, the, washing their fishing net and all that, Andrew and John, he'll say, follow me. And they followed. Matthew was busy collecting money at the tax collector receipt. And then he says, follow me. He left everything and followed him. He never heals and then say, now you follow me. He never makes his Healing, His grace is something that obligates you. I love Him. Amen. To see Jesus makes my spiritual hormones bubble. Amen. That's what we, it's all about. Sometimes we don't have to see and say, what can I learn? What can I learn? It's not about you. One of the best things you can learn is that to, when you see His beauty is to worship, Amen. to enjoy Him. Amen. I think the Father wants above everything else that this Bible, it becomes a picture book of His Son. And then when you behold Him, you'll be surprised. You're actually being transformed from glory to glory, even into the likeness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Notice what He told the blind man. Go your way. But the Bible says, immediately He received His sight and followed Jesus on the way. The old King James says, He followed Jesus on the way. In other words, Jesus says, go your way. You know what the guy says? Yes, my way is your way. Hallelujah. What a Savior. What a God. Hallelujah. And God is healing people right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, if you have a joint condition, I mean, to stand up right now in Jesus' name. Amen. There's someone here with a right shoulder condition. Stand up right now. Joint condition, elbow condition, and start moving that area. Start moving that area right now in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord all over this place. Thank you, Lord. Also a neck condition. In fact, there's someone here, your neck cannot turn back all the way, and now you can. Turn around. Turn around. See what the Lord has done. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Headaches left while the Word was being preached. If that is you, just stand to your feet. All right? Just stand to your feet right now, wherever you are. If headache has left you, amen. Some of you have this condition for some time. Now, those of you who are standing, 
Amen? If you know the condition has left you, do a big wave of thanks. All kinds of healings is happening. There is also someone here, you, you, you have a, a, a loved one that has been throwing up uh, for the past few days. All right, you, I think it is a, a close, uh, could be your, your, I think a child, not, not a child, but an older, uh, older kid. You go home and find he is well. Amen? And write to us and let us know what happened. Okay? Whatever testimonies that's going forth, amen? If you do not know right now that you are well, but you know it later, please write to the church and let us know what happened. Give Jesus the praise because of time. Give Him all the praise and the glory and all the honor. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, no, Jesus is alive today. Amen. And the same one that healed Bartimaeus is going to heal you. Amen. Amen. Many, many, many years ago, when Joshua was about to conquer Jericho the next day, the night before, he saw a man with a drawn sword. And he asked the man, are you here for us? Or are you here, which side are you on? Are you here to take sides or are you for the enemy? And the man says, I'm the captain of the Lord of hosts. I'm not here to take sides. I'm here to take over. And that man is Jesus in his pre-incarnate form because he told Joshua, take off your shoes. The place you are standing is holy. And the Bible says Joshua worshiped him. The same Jesus came to Jericho, now in human form. Amen. But there's no sword now in his hand only healing. Amen. How many are glad we are no more under law? We are under grace. Jesus brought grace. Praise the Lord. Give Jesus all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Friend, perhaps you are here and you know that you are lost. I'm not saying how good you are. I'm not saying how good you have been. I'm not talking about your works. I'm talking that you know you're lost. And only in the name of Jesus is salvation. Only His blood can wash you whiter than snow. What can be whiter than snow? Sometimes snow is so bright in the reflection, you have to wear sun, sun goggles, not to be blinded. And yet, when Jesus' blood washes you, it's whiter than snow, the Bible says. Friend, would you like to be washed in the blood of Jesus? Would you like to be born again? If that is you right now, wherever you are, pray this prayer with me. Say, Father in heaven, thank you for the gift of your Son. Thank you for loving me and sending Jesus to die for my sins as my divine substitute. On that cross, He bore all my sins and all my judgment until He's finished. And you raised Him from the dead as a declaration, all my sins have been put away. Jesus Christ is my Lord. And from now on, I'm greatly blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved. In Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen, Amen. Stand to your feet. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Some of you are going for your vacation, your holidays and all that. I'm going to pray for protection. Never take protection for granted. Amen. Lift your hands all across this place. Father in heaven, I thank you that you are the God who commissioned your angels to keep charge over your people. I pray in Jesus' name that this coming week, for those who are traveling, for those who are going places, Lord, and even for those who are here, Lord, in all their daily uh, 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 travels, Lord, I pray, commission your angels to keep charge over them, to deliver them from all evil. Protect your people, Lord, throughout this week from every harm, danger, accident, terror, from tragedy. And also protect them, Lord, from every infection, from every disease. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, you'll go in front of them, make all the crooked places straight. Thank you, Father, for the gift of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the greatest gift, Lord, we can ever have. Give us your spirit of wisdom and revelation that this coming week we see more and more of our Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, and all the people said, Amen. God bless you. We'll see you again. Amen. Blessed by what you've seen today? Subscribe to the Joseph Prince Ministries YouTube channel and never miss a single episode. New videos released daily that will encourage and empower you to live a victorious life. 